Hey guys and gals, how are you guys doing? I am doing wonderful. I'm doing way better than I thought I would be doing after running 100K last weekend. After a day or two, I felt like I hadn't even run. The next day, I was a little sore, but I got up, did a bunch of walking, and have been doing walking each day, and I've been doing really, really well. I am super pumped for my race, which is two weeks away, and we'll see how well I'm doing after doing 100 miles or 72 hours of running. So this was it right uh, right over here. See this one right here? 100K under my belt, my first 100K. So I wanted to take a few minutes and share with you what worked, what didn't work, what uh, might need some adjustments. Just give you guys an idea as to what worked for me. So maybe you can take that and see if uh, any of that would help you in any of your upcoming races or long runs. So number one was socks and shoes. I would say that I run in a Sockenies and I use a variety of socks. I take different socks with me because I'm always concerned that what if uh, this pair of socks that day just doesn't feel right. Maybe it's a single layer sock, um, maybe it's the uh, toe type socks here, uh, and uh, you know what, the dual layer sock is the one that actually should have worked that day. What I do is I bring a variety of socks and then I had multiple pairs of shoes. These are both Sockenies, but I had a trail and I had a running, uh, uh, road running shoe. Well, if it was more technical, I would have had two pair of trail shoes, but the key for me was changing socks and shoes. I'd been told that, that that is a big deal and I did 100K, so had I been doing more, I might've wanted maybe three pair of shoes, but at mile 40, I changed my socks and I changed my shoes and wow, did it feel like uh, I had new feet. Just even though I had no blisters, I was really lucky, no hot spots, no blisters, no issues whatsoever with my feet. I am really lucky that way. Knock on wood, that has always been the case for me, but putting on new socks, putting on new shoes, I don't know if it's taking them off, your feet are swollen probably, so retying them, it, it just made a huge difference in just mental feeling better. Number two was nutrition for me, and I used water and I used gels. That is pretty much 80% of what I used. I did eat throughout the, throughout the race, and I'm lucky I had some different burritos, and when I would get those, they had breakfast burritos, and they had bean and cheese burritos, and bean and rice burritos, and I would take small a small burrito and, and eat that on the walk, but 80% of what I was taking was water, which I will say I feel I should have taken more water. I did need to drink more while I was drinking kind of constantly. It wasn't enough. Uh, I think uh, I left the race a little bit dehydrated, but gels were key. And for me, a uh, variety of gels I think were key because I did worry about getting into the race and hours and hours in and feeling like, oh my God, I cannot take another gel. I had a huge variety of gels and with that, I think it changed it up. Uh, I put them in a bag, didn't really look at what it was, just would grab one, except for on the hour, I would take a caffeinated gel. And that caffeinated gel, uh, I think having that caffeine once an hour just kind of kept me going, kept my energy levels up. Uh, and then on the half hour, 40 minutes, I would then take a regular gel. And I would take that gel, drink some water, and then it would just be water for the next 20 to 25 minutes until it was time to take another gel. And that worked great. Number three, I'll have to say it was a fail. And that was the Apple Watch. This not made for running 24 hours. Uh, I wasn't sure how long it would last. I hadn't run that long before. So when I started at the beginning of the race, it didn't even last eight hours. It died at mile, I think 24 or something like that, 25 maybe. So that, no good, you know, I, I have to figure out what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to get a new watch. I'm looking at either the Suunto, the Garmin, the Koros. They each make one, whether it's the Phoenix 5 from Garmin, the uh, 9 from Suunto, or the Apex from Koros. I'm trying to decide. Right now, the Koros and the Suunto look like their battery life is really uh, the best. So 
The Apple Watch did not work. The, only, the other option would be just a generic, nice, cheap, you know, watch that I can just look at so I know what time it is and kind of calculate based on mileage and, and try and do math that way. But Apple Watch, no good for your ultra running. Number four is clothing. I thought I took a variety of clothing, but looking back, I really didn't take the right clothing to cover all cases. I had light tech shirts, I had a light pullover, and then I really uh, just had a, a jacket which was too heavy. And looking at it, it was windy. So that was one of the problems is I really didn't anticipate wind. And I thought if it was gonna be wind, the weather said it was gonna be warm, so it wouldn't be an issue, but it got cold in the evening. And I think as you run longer and longer and longer, your body potentially, you know, at least with me and Tough Mudder, your body has a harder time regulating its temperature, keeping yourself warm. What I am going to do next time is to bring a couple of light layers of shirts, because even just going in and changing your shirt, changing your shorts, it makes a big difference, just like changing your shoes, but a light layer of uh, light shirts, then maybe a medium kind of pullover like this, a um, couple of these, then something heavier, maybe a heavier, thicker pullover, then a light windbreaker type jacket, and then maybe something much heavier like my puffy with a hood, just in case it gets super windy or rainy, things like that. Now number five is lubrication. You know, I brought Body Glide and while it worked, I didn't come out too bad, but uh, I think uh, I'm gonna look at some different brands, something that uh, potentially I could use almost like a medical glove to apply because uh, sometimes you, you need to get in there and I don't know if you necessarily wanna use a stick over and over and over again. So I would like to see what else is out there. Something that I can possibly put a glove on, put some on and then toss the glove out and then be able to do that later. And what I would do better next time would be more preventative uh, applying of the chafing cream or the lubrication. You know, I didn't really reapply until 40, and at that point I was kind of getting a little uncomfortable. Uh, I should have applied every time. You know, if I went in and had uh, two minutes to go in and eat something other than a gel, I should have applied a little more then, just to constantly keep applying it so that it, you're not applying it once it's gone, you're just keeping layers of lubrication on. Number six goes along with lubrication, kind of, uh, chapstick or uh, in this case, like a lip therapy, this is a Vaseline, uh, something for your lips. I had nothing and the day after the race, uh, even during the race, my lips were chapped and they are still chapped and they're getting better now. But I think just one, it was windy out there, it was sunny out there and uh, you're, I think just licking your lips throughout the race and the elements. So having some sort of lip care that you can put on every couple hours when you come through would be uh, really key or carry in your pack. Number seven is lights. Now I had a little headlamp and while I didn't use that because there was enough light on this track, uh, I really dislike headlamps. I don't like the way they feel in my head. They end up aggravating me. I don't like the way you can see the dust that's coming off the ground. You see, you know, you're breathing it in. I just, I'm not a fan of headlamps. And while I was out there, I got to look at and see people using lamps that go on their waist. And so as soon as I got back, I went online, I read some reviews, and I bought the Ultra Spire uh, Waste Light. And I am excited to use this. It has three different modes plus flashing, and it is also battery based, not USB based. My headlamp is USB based, so it's gonna go down and it's not gonna make it for the whole night most likely. And in that case, especially this next race where I have three nights, I can charge it throughout the day, but this one takes AAA batteries. So being able to just swap the batteries out and not worry about USB chargers and all of that stuff. Plus it has a little pouch for carrying gels, things like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to use the, the lamp. I just, I'm not a fan of headlamps. Number eight is wet wipes or baby wipes. I did not bring them, but luckily my super prepared good friends, Gary and Tracy, had packs of wet wipes and baby wipes. And those were a lifesaver. It was almost like the shoes and the socks. You come in and you just wipe down, wipe your face, wipe off, 
go to the bathroom, use a wet wipe, add more lubrication. Just having those wipes, uh, it was refreshing to be able to use those every few hours or I would used it at, at 40 and then I used it right again at the end of the race. That made a big difference in just making me feel more comfortable. So that will be added to my list for my race in a couple weeks. Overall, I think the race was a success. I was fairly prepared. Things went really well. They could have gone way worse. But these things I think are just little comfort things, little things you can do to make life easier. I hope you guys take something away from this. I'm excited. I've got two weeks till the race and uh, I'm gonna be doing some shopping, some organizing, going through, still thinking through what else I might do. But if you have any comments, you have any questions, leave them below. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, I'm doing some walking and a little bit of running this week. I'm in the taper mode, but I will see you in just a few days.